and welcome to a special video. This is, as you might have guessed from the title, about getting the Rakuyo, a weapon that is rather notoriously a pain in the ass to get. Thankfully, there is actually a pretty decent way of getting it. You can see I've already got it. Uh, the successful run where I did that, uh, the PS4 decided to be an ass and uh, dig me about with recording it, so I'd had to do it again. That was lovely. Anyway, it's an ass because of these monsters which just have hitboxes and damage the size of fucking jet engines. Thankfully though, there isn't actually a good way of dealing with it, I just get my ass smacked about for a bit. You know, just to demonstrate how much of an ass they are. However, once you get used to the moves, they are very easy to backstab. And that is the key to dealing with one of them at a time, and if you do this right, you will only ever be dealing with one at a time. Because the key here is to bring this guy down to about half health. Once you've done that, his buddy goes to join him. But, his buddy is actually going to be his biggest problem. Because I'm going to use Shaman Bone Blades to go and turn his buddy against him. That's what Shaman Bone Blades do. I haven't used him in the LP, but I will use it right here. He comes down, I go jab this guy and he leaves. And from there on, it becomes a lot easier. They will fight each other over you, as long as you stay out of the way. And if you're very lucky, they'll kill each other. But if not, then you will have to deal with... Probably this guy's the worst to deal with. But even then, like, he's a lot lower health, he doesn't have any new moves. So it's just a matter of being very patient and not doing anything stupid. If you can manage that, then you're solid. And that is the end. Very easy to die, but also fairly quickly easy to succeed. The last one you kill will drop the Rakio. And then it's yours. It requires 20 dexterity and 10 strength, I think. Yes, that's right. Very good skill weapon, but also really annoying to get. Trick Sword originated in the same country as the Kanehurst Chicago. Only the sword feeds not off blood, but instead demands great dexterity. Lady Maria was fond of this aspect of the Rakio as she frowned upon blood blades, despite being a distant relative of the Queen, and despite using blood blades to kick your ass in the fight. But I'll get on that at a later point, I imagine. Now, here is a demonstration of what the moveset of the Rakio actually is. With another character, who can actually use the damn thing. The untransformed moveset is basically just a fairly standard sword, very quick. It's got a very quick charged attack with quite a bit of range. I quite like that about it. And the reason I'm doing backstep uh, attack separately to, roll, to running attacks is because, unlike in any of the other games, I think, um, they are quite different attacks in Bloodborne. But that's its untransform moveset. Pretty unexceptional, to be honest. And some fairly nice transform attacks. What is exceptional about this weapon, however, is the transformation. Which just looks like two blades, but, you know, that's because it is. However, with that, you get access to a great variety of movesets. You have a lot of thrust attacks on the R2s, the R1s are nice slashes, you have this uh, L2 combo, but the thing about it is, is that, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute, um, you can combo the L2 attacks in ways that you can't really do with other weapons, because the L2 attack is modified depending on what attack was used before, and you'll see in a minute, I use an R1, and then follow up with an L1, L2. And that's a different uh, L2 to the spin dash combo you saw before. The same applies to R2s. It becomes a dual thrust. So you can mix and match different attacks depending on what's important. The R2s are a lot faster and have a lot more reach, but the R1 combos have a lot more sweeping moveset. Anyway, that's about it. See you around. 